Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Sconcy Business, and today we're here with Rice Crypto. Do you want to just start off by sharing a little bit about yourself? Yeah, man. Well, first of all, I appreciate you know the invitation to do this collaboration. Um, I definitely like yeah. working with other content creators, and I think it's important for us to kind of form that community. Um, I'm a content creator and a journalist. I have a YouTube channel, which I also mirror on Library. Uh, library, I'm posting exclusive content. So if somebody likes my content, I encourage them to check me out on, on Library. But I definitely need the support on YouTube as well. Um, I talk about cryptocurrency and blockchain uh, economics. I also try to educate people about anarchy and voluntarism. So my channel is kind of... Um, it's not really all over the place, but I don't just limit myself to just cryptocurrency and blockchain. And I feel like the economics and anarchy ideals kind of goes hand in hand with my belief system and why I got involved in Bitcoin and crypto. Um, a yeah. lot of my a lot of my content uh, tends to be interviews, uh, long like long form interviews with people like Andreas Antonopoulos, Roger Veer, Anthony Pompliano, John McAfee, Adam Kokesh. I actually got to interview them both together for the first time in a joint interview because they're teaming up to run for their, uh, their presidential run with the Libertarian Party. Um, but I wow. also do like some reviews, tutorial, educational stuff, and um, some positivity videos and something I call practice change, where I am basically just encouraging people to be the change that they want to see in the world. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I do a lot of really similar stuff where I'm kind of focused on interviews and crypto, but then you know, I, I dabble into other things um, that are sort of that sort of fit in the space in the same way. So we were just talking a lot about um, about YouTube censorship. So if you want to just kind of go back into that and uh, and maybe yeah. reintroduce kind of what we were just talking about for uh, for the audience, I think that would be a good way to start. That's cool. Yeah. Um, if some people are unaware, it was around Christmas time of last year that what took place that we were calling the crypto YouTube purge. And it really still isn't like a lot of clear explanation as to what happened. But ultimately, a lot of crypto content creators, uh, YouTube channels were affected in being like I woke up on Christmas Eve and had a, uh, a warning and two videos removed, woke up on Christmas morning had uh, a strike and a, and a third video removed. Then on the day after Christmas, everything was back to normal and it was as if it never took place. And I never really got any kind of explanation from YouTube as to what went on, whether it was a mistake, whether they were attacking uh, the cryptocurrency content creators. Um, but on my own, in addition to that, like prior to that, and even continually, I have people that are constantly being unsubscribed from my channel that don't unsubscribe, mm. people whose notification bells are being turned off when they don't turn them off, and or people who don't even receive those notifications with the notification bell on. And then I got some people who get notifications and, and everything is like normal. So I, I really don't understand it, but I have... Um, a couple different Gmail accounts. So I have a couple different YouTube accounts. And I even noticed that one of my Gmail accounts was unsubscribed from my own channel. Like I subscribed to my channel on another account and I never unsubscribed, but my channel, my, my, my account was unsubscribed and it was an active account. It wasn't if it was, as if it was just a non, you know, used account and things like that. So, you know, not that I'm an Alex Jones fan, but I'm a, I'm a, a very big proponent of freedom of speech. And that's a double-edged sword because, you know, I may not agree with somebody's message, but at the same time, I've got to give them the same thing and respect that I want, which is basically freedom of speech. And I'm trying to support that as much as possible. And, you know, even just recently, we've seen a bunch of YouTube channels that have been affected. Um, Data Dash, I think, got hit uh, and actually had the channels. These guys had their channels removed and reinstated Crypto Crow. Tone vase, and this has all been in the past couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. it really woke me up. I was already using decentralized platforms. Um, I was already active on Steam it and using DTube and things like that. Uh, started using BitTubers, but I, you know, in in doing research on these platforms, I started learning about decentralization more in the aspects of a publishing content platform because when you're mm -hmm. storing data. Uh, and if you have web interfaces and things like that, uh, even with library, because library is to me the most decentralized platform out there as far as content sharing, 
but it's not completely decentralized either. It's not 100%. You know, the web interface and all that, it collects data. So there's really no way of having a completely decentralized platform like that. But as long as you got people that are pro freedom of speech, that are you know giving content creators the freedom to be able to say what they want to say without having to worry about it. Because now on YouTube, like you can't even say certain words. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of words that will just get you like demonetized or, 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 um, or flag your video or yeah, just flagged. You know, yeah. Just to a point that it's not going to be suggested in the algorithm. And that's what I was telling you. It's like I'm interviewing all these people. I'm covering some of, to me, some of the best content out there. And I'm doing my best to bring the best. But I'm just like, I feel like YouTube is trying to suppress my voice so much. And um, so, you know, when I get to collaborate with other people, it gives an opportunity for for myself and yourself to be able to talk to a different audience that may not even be familiar with each other. So, I mean... If, you know, if people are checking us out and, you know, on my end and aren't familiar with your channel, I definitely encourage people to subscribe and to check out your channel because we need to support and look out for one another. And there's a lot of lazy people who don't like to sign into their accounts or don't want to press that like button or don't even want to subscribe. I got friends who watch my videos and aren't subscribed. I'm like, look, man, it, it helps us out. It gives mm -hmm. it gives our voice more uh, amplification if we're able to have that um, interaction amongst the people that are watching our content. So it's, it's a two way street for everybody. If you're watching, you have a role. If you, if you like your content creators and, and Scott and myself are bringing value to you, then, you know, just hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe to our channels. All that stuff helps to let YouTube know that you care about us. Did that, I mean, does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I think there's a common, uh, misconception that, you know, people treat it like voting, like a lot of people will say, oh, my vote doesn't matter in the long run. I mean, I feel like that's changed lately where people are a lot more empowered to vote. But I feel like people bring that kind of attitude a lot to uh, to like consumption. And they don't realize that the majority of people who end up watching our content are probably not subscribed. So it, it makes a big impact when they actually do and they show other people and then it kind of snowballs. Um what would you say to people who would make the argument, and I'm not making this argument, mm -hmm. but what would you say to people who would make the argument that YouTube is a private company, so, you know, whatever they're doing policy-wise or free speech-wise is is just fair play? Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that is an absolutely great question. This is something I bring up to a lot of people, and I've been pe speaking to a lot of people, even, like, I spoke about this last night with Rachel Wilson, who writes with Cointelegraph, and she wasn't even aware of what I'm about to bring up. There's a company called Prager University, and mm, PragerU yeah, yeah. is, is suing YouTube. Mm. And what they're doing, yes, YouTube right now is a private company, okay? But YouTube is allowing people to publish content. So that puts them in a different area. So are they a publisher or are they a public utility giving people a voice? Because if they're a public utility, then they can't be doing the censorship and, and all the things that they're doing, deleting channels and all that kind of stuff. That would be a completely against that. If they were a publisher, then they could have control of their content and they could essentially get rid of people. Now, you technically can't be both. But the way that this court case is going, uh, depending on how the judge and a jury uh, renders their verdict, um, it could be defined as both. So I will give people how, an how recent was this? Uh, like, did it's this still, case it's start? It's happening. It's uh, okay. I don't know when it. I don't. It's been going on. It's ongoing. I don't even think that they've even had like proceedings yet. Okay, because um, yeah, because I follow them, but I, I I hadn't like kept up enough to know that this was uh what was happening right now. Yeah, and I've been trying to tell people like they like a lot of like. We need to get behind companies like that because what they're doing is very important. So to define what to give a better example to people who are listening about what I'm saying, I'm going to use like a power company as an example. A power company is a public utility company. So they're not responsible for what you do with that power. So if, if I decide to grow marijuana in my house, which is illegal and where I, where I live, then it does not hold any accountability to the power company for supplying me power to do some illegal, illegal activity. So if YouTube was to be defined as a public forum, then they absolve themselves of that responsibility. 
But yeah, they're yeah. a private I, company. They got they got stakeholders. They got to they got to worry about profits. So then, do they want to be a publisher and control it? So it's they really technically can't be both. And I would like to see YouTube be defined. And it yeah. definitely needs to be. But the fact that they're owned by Google isn't very positive either. Yeah, yeah, and I think an even stronger analogy, not to like downplay yours at all, uh, is to look at like telecommunications, right? Like. Um, Rogers, like, like here in Canada, Rogers and Bell wouldn't, uh, listen to my conversations on my phone and then like decide whether or not I get to continue using their service based on the conversations I have. Um, so I, I think that's, that's kind of the way that people have to look at it. Um, and you know, on, on YouTube, you know, there's a lot of content, so it's hard for them to, actually go through and and with things like the commercial uh, viability changes in December uh, with the COPPA changes in January, there's so many restrictions being placed on content creators that the window of content, so to speak, is becoming narrower and narrower every year. And, um, you know, it, it it just makes it so challenging for content creators to be able to keep up. And it's just like this moving target. Uh, and, and, it, and it's so, so challenging. And I think um, they're they're like squeezing people out slowly but surely. And uh, I, I don't know what they're trying to do. I think my 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 opinion is that they're trying to become like a Netflix but um, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Like, what, what do you think there? Do you think they're trying to become like a Netflix streaming service with YouTube premium and everything? Do you think that's why this kind of stuff is happening? And maybe this is just the beginning or or what do you what do you think there? I mean, this it's a possibility. And I honestly, I don't understand enough about the laws on this end to like really be able to like give somebody a, an educated answer. But what I will say is I've been talking to a friend of mine, uh, Bitcoin Ben, and he's been talking to a lawyer, um, Blake Rizzo, who's does a lot in the cryptocurrency space. He's um, I think he's the lawyer for the Litecoin Foundation as well. And um, he's uh, they're looking into like laws and how memberships work because when you're a member and you're paying that puts you in a different position than just being uh, a viewer so and there's actually laws and things like that that kind of cover a person under a membership's term so what youtube is doing with this situation could in a sense backfire on them because being a you know let's say i start paying with my account now i'm a member of this uh, of youtube like i'm a part of this club and i get benefits of being in the club that you know that you can't really take away from me and i get to push that aspect in the court of law if and when you know youtube decides to go against those terms of that membership so i'm really interested in what blake and ben are doing and I would like to, uh, you know, for people just to kind of pay attention um, in that regards, because uh, Ben is talking about the idea of us, in a way, unionizing, uh, which I think would be very important. And I don't want to limit these kind of things to just, you know, your cryptocurrency content creators, because we're talking about freedom of speech for everybody. So I don't agree with a lot of people's views on Earth being flat. But I still think that they have a right to be able to speak and their voices don't need to be suppressed. And, you know, so I, I I just really would like to pay attention a little bit more to what Blake and Ben are doing as far as that membership term, because that it, it's really an interesting thing when you think about this possibly giving us a position of power and to be able to, like, put some sort of ramifications on YouTube for doing what they're doing. Um, it, it might be very possible that we could actually put like together a class action lo lawsuit and sue YouTube and, and take arms, like, you know, like what Prager University is doing. Yeah, I think having like some sort of like content creator union would be a huge step forward for creators to have more of a um, unified voice to be able to deal with things like this. So in terms of... Um, in terms of like censorship, and we, we know this isn't just to crypto uh, users, it's happening to tons of different channels, like people talking about history. Anything that involves like this, critical thinking. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's weird, like they, they, they really zero in on like World War II history, uh, and they really crack down on that for some reason. There's a lot of like 
weird things that they're doing where they're trying to like erase past examples of socialism. And there, there's a lot of weird stuff going on with uh, the way that they're conducting themselves. Do you think that there's like a specific political ideology in mind? Like, like what are your thoughts on some of the motivations behind this? Do you think that it's like specifically targeted because a lot of people have said, you know, with, uh, in terms of like the private uh, company argument that they've been, you know, meddling in elections. Project Veritas has come out and showed a lot of stuff going on. Um, so like obviously they're not just acting as a private company if they're influencing politics and, you know, they have all these uh, all this influence on, on stuff that's happening that is going to largely impact um, the countries that they're um, based out of. What do you, like what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, for, first of all, I mean, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, unfortunately, YouTube might have start, started out with good intentions. But if we do our research on, on all the major media companies out there, they're all owned by six different companies. Um, so th there's a power and a control. There's a power in having control of the media. Uh, they call they call programming on television programming for a reason, because it's actually designed to program you. Um, mm. In my school system in the United States, I've been conditioned to believe things in in a certain manner. I, I used to have to go to school and pledge allegiance to the flag. I mean, it was it, very cult like. It was very, you know. But when so. With YouTube being in the position that they are uh, being owned by Google and Google trying to become this corporate powerhouse, um, we are kind of leaning. If you're familiar with that, uh, it's been brought up so much by people, the movie Idiocracy. Yeah. It seems like we're kind of headed in that type of a direction. And if people want to watch that movie, I think it would correlate a lot to what we're talking about because I think that um, in the future, the ideas of the uh, of what government is will change and evolve. And it might even get to a point that we're going to be like in this corporate corporatocracy. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but it's like a where, where corporations control everything. Yeah. Yeah. I I've heard recently, um, just look, look at the look term at the was... power, look at the power that Google and Amazon have alone. Yeah. I think the term that I heard recently was a technocratic oligarchy. Uh, yeah, that, where that's, the, yeah, that that says it exactly. Yeah, like where the companies um, that have the most control in the tech field are able to manipulate and control what people are thinking and seeing, and thus uh, they will have the control and then an oligarchy because they're doing it in such a small um, a small amount of people are actually making the decisions for anyone watching. Right. Um, yeah, and and I think that's already in some way happening, right? Like with with Google um, manipulating elections and Facebook, and we're already seeing that. I mean, if if that's not already just the case, well, I mean, um, they're helping China out with their surveillance mechanisms. I mean, Google is like they've got their hands in a lot of stuff, and it's actually really mm -hmm. scary. I think it was. Um, I'm a little bit older, so I mean, it, it's probably been like ten, fifteen, maybe twenty years since this happened. But there was a. I think it was Time Warner um, who, you know, at the time they were just getting crazy, bought AOL and all this. It was it ended up AOL Time Warner. And then um, they were trying to purchase, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was like Bank of America or like it was a bank. And the government had put a stop to allowing them to do that because they didn't want that company to have that much of like their hands in people's business. It would actually, if you, if you take and consider all of the things that they own and put them together, it kind of, it's almost as if like what Google's doing now. So it's, it's kind of scary that Google's been able to um, be allowed to do what they're doing. But again, like I, not to be like a conspiracy theorist, but to be a critical thinker, you know, people just definitely need to do the research on these subjects. I mean, it's we're at a scary point with everything going on um, around the world currently, you know, with this um, various corn thing. And if you take those letters and mix it up, it spells out a certain thing that we're experiencing. Um, if you look into like everything that's going on, uh, you'll start to question things. And the more that you question things and educate yourself, you're going to realize the facade of what's going on and how much control that these governments, central banks, corporations are just trying to get over all of us. And ultimately, just like what's going on right now, 
your country, my country, and all around the world is people are giving up their rights right now, their basic human rights for the idea of this false sense of security from the government because of because of what's happening. Mm-hmm. And it's scary. Yeah. It's yeah. scary. And man. I mean, people people aren't even fighting this, man. Like we don't we don't know what the word revolution means. Like um, it's it's all it's like what these guys did in the United States, the founding fathers with the creation of the United States, this revolution that they did. People don't we don't have people like that anymore. We don't have any JFKs, any Martin Luther King Juniors. We don't have these these people who inspire people to think outside the box, educate themselves and empower themselves because the most important thing that I can say to anybody right now is that you, me, we all have power. As an individual, we have power, we have a voice, and we can make a difference. We've been taught and conditioned to think otherwise. Now, with that being said, when you combine our voices, okay, when we're not divided, we can stand up against anything. If enough of us stand up and unite and we get rid of all this division that the media, the government, and all these people have put in place to just keep us fighting amongst ourselves, if enough people stand up against this tyranny and unjust, there's no way that that tyranny or unjust could stand up against those people. Absolutely no mm-hmm. way. So I just really yeah. would like to ignite that fire in somebody and let you know that your voice matters and our voices together has has power and we need to work together and not just give up our basic human rights for this false sense of security. We need to empower ourselves and take responsibility for our actions. Yeah, and I, I will say uh, Canada is definitely a lot... Um more egregious for uh for doing things like that like we have a number of hate speech laws and they're like if you know um about like jordan peterson's rise to fame for bill bill c16 here so yeah there's a lot of weird laws here in canada so yeah um, well i've become really good friends with uh kyle kemper are you familiar with him uh i'm not no he's justin trudeau's brother oh okay so I've okay. interviewed him a couple of times. He's a really good cat. He's been talking out about this as well, uh, about people giving up their basic human rights. Um, he's actually been contacted by his mother is like Justin's mom is uh, supremely disappointed in Kyle's behavior because he's talking a lot of similar messages that I'm talking about. And um, unfortunately, I mean, when when you're using critical thinking, I'm sure somebody watching this is going to think this guy is crazy. But, you know, <laughs> that's that's fine. Um you're you're free to choose you know to to think about me however you would like to but i'm trying to educate people and i'm not trying to tell people this is how it is i'm telling you to do your own research the stuff that i'm talking about and that scott's talking about the stuff that we cover in our videos just because we're we're mentioning doesn't mean it's true so you should always fact check people and just educate yourself and use critical thinking regardless of what people think last night dude I, i was having a moment where I was really feeling very alienated and, you know, not only, you know, because we're all self quarantined and all that, but, you know, the thing, the things that I'm talking about, the things that I'm passionate about, I, I, there's a lot of people in my life that just don't relate to me. And it's, it's very sad, man. It's very sad. That a lot of people are very comfortable uh, and with their, their ignorance. Uh, yeah. It's, it's really like, hard. It's, it's to... very matrix like. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's really hard to, to get people to care because if people don't care it's just like you know you can lead a horse to water but you can't make a horse drink so it's really challenging to make people feel that same passion and uh like it's just not possible right they either do or they don't and the frustrating thing for someone like me or you is you'd think that maybe you're not explaining it correctly or like they're they're just not getting it and then there should be like a click and then they would just get it but like that that doesn't really tend to happen so i think that that's a really frustrating thing for uh for people like us who are trying to make a paradigm shift happen right like i think um like my big thing is is decentralization and getting people to uh you know find ways to make money outside of nine to five you know, empowering yourself to be financially independent, not relying on, on uh, the system in any way. Like, I I think it's so, so important, but a lot of people just kind of brush it off and they're like, that's not normal. That's not how you live. And here we are now, all the people who are relying on the system. And by no means am I like rubbing this in, 
uh, a lot of them are out of work and and they're screwed because they relied on the system and they thought playing it safe was the safest way to go but sometimes playing it safe is the riskiest thing you can do um yeah. because then you fall into a state of complacency apathy you know it, it it just makes it so hard for you to 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 actually do something because you get so comfortable and people don't want to risk that or take two take a two steps back to take four steps forward or one step back two steps forward whatever um and and i think that it's really important for people to to look into more things to be able to like expand their horizons and that's why i talk about all these decentralized applications because there's so many people sitting at home who could just start up a, a video and post it on library and then they make like five dollars and they're like oh my God, I can get paid just for talking about something online. This is insane. And, um, and I think it, it's so mind blowing to people that people don't even believe it. And they think it's like a scam or something like for any of these platforms, they're like, there's no way that you're just going to get money for no reason. It's like YouTube would have just done that. If that was the case, it's like, well, no, YouTube wants to just keep that money for themselves. They're all, they don't want to share it. So I'm actually writing a book right now called the undiscovered value of your content. And the idea is that people didn't even know that their content had any value at all until uh, they start posting on these platforms and realize that, oh, my content did have value on YouTube. It did have value on Facebook. I just wasn't getting any. So now we're, there's all these options out there where people can get a chunk of that. And, um, and it's, and it's very easy to do now. So, so I want to sort of, uh, switch the conversation into talking about yeah. decentralized applications. Uh, so, so let's, let's start off with library. Like, what are your thoughts there? It's probably my favorite DAP right now. Yeah, no, I, I really, really am impressed with library from what I'm under, cause I've interviewed the CEO twice and I'm getting ready to release the second interview in a couple of days. Okay. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm from what I understand it is a code fork of Bitcoin. So they took the original code from Bitcoin and then they made some changes that allowed for them to do the publishing of videos and allow them to store videos on a node system because that's how it works as far as um, their video storage. That's where I was talking about the difference with the decentralization and centralization. I mean, as far as using the applications itself minus the web interface, completely decentralized. Uh, but when you add in that web interface um, and then a the data collection, I mean, that, unfortunately, that adds a centralized um, part to it. Now, unfor the unfortunate thing, though, with a lot of these dApps is that they're not 100% exactly as user friendly. Um, yeah. Now, it, like Steam it, Steam, it was a pain in the butt to sign up for back you know, a couple of years ago. So that was very frustrating for people to go through that whole process. Um, I do like the fact that some people have made it easier, but like, I don't think you can comment on people's videos uh, on library, and that might be a, a storage issue. I'm not really sure. Uh, I know that they're getting ready to add like a Patreon type um, deal where you can charge. I think it's there now um, where you can actually charge for your content. So if like I have a video that I, I feel like has value and I you know, want to try to get some support from the community and helping me out because you know we don't necessarily make a lot of money doing what we're doing, um, depending on your role and your integrity because <laughs> i mean there's yeah. a lot of people out there who who don't have very much integrity and i'm not going to like say anything negative about anybody but you can tell the people who are trying to shill and push stuff on people versus the uh, people that are just trying to give good provide good information and education and the people that are trying to provide good education and information uh, are, are kind of suffering a little bit so i mean it it helps a lot when people can contribute um tipping um you know, I'm going to start my Patreon channel. Like I started it, um, started to push it a couple of months ago and really nobody really seemed to be interested, but I'm going to really do a heavy push for it. And what I'm going to be doing is taking my, some of my interviews, um, because I got, you know, beginnings and endings that don't go in the interview and, um, if people are cool with it, then I'm just going to like post it up unedited. it. Uh, from the very beginning to the very end and let people see it kind of like how it takes place, the kind of relationships I have with people. I also want to be able to have conversations um, where I, it would allow for freedom of not having to worry about what you're saying because like how we're talking about on YouTube. So um, 
I'm definitely a huge fan of what library is doing. Uh, I am a part of their alpha program testing out the library to YouTube. So when I post up on library, it automatically posts it up on YouTube because before I would have to wait somewhere around 24 hours after it was posted to YouTube for it to post up the library. And at that point, I have to promote the video. So I'm really only promoting YouTube. So now that I'm working with the alpha program, I'm able to post some, you know, I'm able to post and share both links to people to give people that opportunity to choose which platform that they want to utilize. So I think it's really cool that um, that we have that freedom with library. And I like the growth. There's a lot of changes coming to the platform. Um, so I'm just really looking forward. To, and and they just got Andreas Antonopoulos signing, signed up on the platform. So his content will be on there. And, uh, on I've YouTube? Been, I mean on library? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Because yeah, I, talked, I, talked I to actually Tommy confirmed it. And I'm trying to get Pomp. I've sent him my referral link and I've explained to him. I'm like, at the very minimum, Pomp, do it to back your content up. And you could take your library credits and trade it for more, more Bitcoin. You know, that's what you want to do. So yeah. um, I think the more that we're able to get these bigger names and content creators that are not necessarily crypto content creators, um, you know, I think that that's going to help bring some more viability and some focus and attention. I think that they've had some uh, a huge increase in users since Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, it's funny that you say that because I just had an interview with Andreas about a week ago, and um, I, I did it for Be in Crypto, and and they said that I might have I might have pushed too hard on asking him to join Library, <laughs> um, so maybe maybe that's part of why he's joining. Um, I think that's hilarious, but that that's really good to see. Um, yeah, Tom Tom had just confirmed that with me a couple of days ago because I sent. Uh, Anthony Pompliano, an email with my referral link, a frequently asked questions for the YouTube program, and also a CoinGecko link for library credits. And I blind CC'd um, Tom and uh, and Jeremy, the CEO and the marketing guy. I, I, I think Tom has more of a role than just marketing, but. True. Yeah, yeah. And um, also, um, you mentioned that you couldn't do comments. Uh, they recently came out with comment threading, actually, on uh, on library. So, that's something that you should definitely check out because uh, unfortunately you, you can't get notifications other than like email, but, uh, but yeah, they have comment threading now, which I thought was really, really awesome to see that I can finally start like replying to people and then they'll actually get a notification at least via email. Um, so That's I cool. think they're definitely, yeah, they're definitely making strides. And once we can get to the point where you actually have like a little like notifications at the top and it'll like pop up and say someone commented or someone replied, that is when people are going to be like, okay, this is basically like YouTube now. They also, I recently tweeted at them and said, like, when are we going to see playlists? And they said that's in the works or it's already been made. They just need to implement it, I think. So they're definitely doing a lot. And uh, I went through the roadmap earlier this year and they also have like a ridiculous amount of things in the works to add more monetization. So like yeah. it, it already is by far the most like offers the most ways to monetize and they've got a lot of new ways in the works. Like I think some of them were um, if you help store library videos on your uh, PC and then share the bandwidth, you'll earn library coins for that. I think they might be coming out with like um, ads if like because I know they're running them on the library website, but not that only TV. for people who aren't signed in. Yeah, for people who aren't signed in, they will see an ad and then creators will get a percentage of that. I think that's the way that it's going to be, um, but they won't run ads for people who are signed in or on the app. So it's definitely going to be not very intrusive, but they're, they're coming cool. out with all these different ways. Yeah. And well, and that's I think a, that's the just... cool thing about our space too, man. It's like everything happens so fast. I mean, I try to keep up with mm -hmm. library, but I mean, I, like, I, I mean, you're telling me stuff that I didn't even know about. And so, I mean, that's, that's the crazy thing about this space is that it just moves so fast. And I am definitely impressed yeah. with their work ethic because they have, they have so much like going on. They're, they're really working very hard to make that platform a better platform and they're taking advantage of the fact that there's more spotlight on them because of what's happened in regards to the censorship and, and the shadow banning and and people's channels being removed and all that yeah so yeah. they're capitalizing on on the time and it's very it's it's I'm, I'm super impressed um these guys like 
couple times I've had issues because uh, I'm having to learn a little bit more about some of the video stuff because I'm having to encode the videos differently on my end to reduce yeah. the size. Yeah. So I mean, I'm learning things, yeah. but a couple of times, like they've even gotten remote, like got remote computer with me and helped me through my process with it. So, I mean, mm -hmm. these guys have been very hands-on. I'm able to just hit the CEO up and ask him questions. So, I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in a position I am with talking to some of these folks because I, I got a lot of faith in, in what library is going to be able to do in the future and how it's going to be able to grow. And I just, and I've been trying to be very adamant to, um, Jeremy Kaufman, the CEO and founder, you know, just don't let that, um, don't let all this get to your head and don't let it change who you are. You know, if you're, if you become a next YouTube, are you going to be like YouTube? You know, are you going to, are you, are you going to end up come becoming that which you hate? So, you know, yeah. I try to I try to push that because, I mean, that's a that's a double edged sword. You know, those guys, once they get to a point, once they're able to capture that audience and get that, they could turn around and do the same thing. You know, I'm not that I'm trying to talk negatively about them at all. I'm just trying to keep people in that frame of thinking of being the devil's advocate and staying open minded about what could ha happen in the future, because we need to hold mm -hmm. these companies and each other accountable. Yeah, that's why it's important to have decentralization and different things that are built into the blockchain versus uh, like centralized platforms, right? Because um, though obviously there is obviously still things that he could do or people at library could do, the good thing is that because of the blockchain and because of what is already set in place, it's much more challenging to implement like centralization. So I think that is a very sobering thing for a lot of people. It's very, it, it creates a lot more trust for us to be able to put our time and energy and, and money into these platforms. And I think that's what helps a lot of creators have that confidence in these platforms, because you know that you don't need to trust a person as much as you need to trust code. But obviously, you know, people aren't perfect and you still, there's still potential for something bad to happen, but it gives us a lot more confidence with having that. Dude, it's funny. When you brought up dApps too, I was trying to find something here on my phone. Um, I think that it, Samsung has just recently started to add, not that I'm a huge Tron fan, but I think they've been adding a few of the TRX dApps on the Samsung store. Um, really? We're, okay. we're seeing some really cool games in the dApp space, like Gods Unchained, okay. uh, Crypto Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah and I also heard that Samsung was going to start coming out with, um, or maybe they already have, uh, crypto wallets by default on their on their phones. It's in the it's in the Samsung store because I have a a Note okay. Ten Plus, and um, I'm trying to pull up the wallet now. It's basically like um an an ERC twenty wallet, but I, it it can hold more. It's called the Samsung Blockchain Wallet. Let me okay, get back out of the screen. Hold on. Samsung blockchain okay. wallet, and then it pulls yeah. up all that, and you can connect up your other wallets with it too. So oh, like I you see. can connect. I love how you have like a up. ton of uh, ton of stuff on the back of your phone. I just have a little uh, little wrist strap thing. Yeah, I got these two, and then uh, you got a lot this of right here. But the reason I, this phone uh, yeah. is huge, it's a Note Ten Plus, so it's true. It's a Cadillac. Yeah. It's I've a just piece. got like a little like band so that I can like hold it like that. Like uh, having the two. Yeah, connects. yeah, yeah, exactly. It yeah. makes it very Super. functional when it's a big bulky phone. Like had I not, I probably wouldn't have, you know, if I would have been able to test it out, I probably wouldn't have used this phone because it's just, it's, it's huge. <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, so, so outside of library or actually, actually just before we, we jump off library, uh, what has your thought like uh, how have you felt with like how much you've earned compared to like say other platforms like say steam or hive i don't know how many platforms you're on um but like what have you seen in terms of like earning potential and 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 how do you feel like the monetization is um okay so with library i'm i i'm, I'm doing well uh, they're taking care of me paying me a little extra uh for being a part of the alpha testing program um but ultimately i'm not trying to sell my um library credits i really believe in the platform so i'm kind of looking at it as like staking like having ownership in the company because the more value that we can all bring to it the more value that hopefully library credits will be and at that point then I, you know i could sell some of my library credits if i wanted to 
Um, but now, as much as I do like library, I am on other platforms. Like I was mentioning earlier, I've been using Steemit in the past. I just recently officially quit Steemit. Um, I was posting on DTube. And uh, up until like what's happened with um, Justin Sun and all that drama and the hard fork, I found that like even interviews with Andreas Antonopoulos, Roger Veer, Max Kaiser was not getting like two votes. You know, I made two cents. You know, it really wasn't worth my time anymore posting on there. So I become, um, a, you know, I really Have you love... moved to Hive or? Yes, yes, I oh. love Hive. So instead of DTube, I'm using 3Speak. Uh, yeah. it's basically, basically a good. It's you know, DTube is still using the Steemit blockchain. Uh, I do like DTube, but I don't want my stuff on Steemit. So, I'm using Hive, and I've interviewed um, Dan. They call me Dan, who is the founder of Three Speak, and um, they've been very supportive of me. And you know, because I'm trying to bring good content to their platform. Same thing with Library. They've been like I've been getting more interaction from the Hive community since getting on 3Speak than I had the whole time using DTube, DLive, and all the stuff that was on Steam and all that. I got so much more love. Like, I interviewed, um, they call me Dan, and I think I haven't got, I think I'm going to be paid out, like, here in a minute. But it was, like, 100, 180 bucks, dude. True. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Like, yeah, and, and, then, and it and just then recently we went through Hive, a huge pump. Yeah, like a, over 250%. Like I was able to take some some of my hive and be able, be able to turn it into other cryptocurrencies and accumulate off that big, huge pump. Not that I don't believe in hive, but I know that I'm going to continue to earn more because I'm becoming, you know, I'm doing my best to try to bring value to that platform. So I've been actually making more, more money uh, that I can utilize off of 3Speak and hive recently than library but I've got more faith and stake in library's future as well. So, I mean, I'm trying to take advantage and keep my stuff out there on as many different platforms as I can. So I'm also on BitTubers. Um, I'm not, I haven't done the bit shoot thing because a lot of the, um, a lot of these sites that are utilizing the IFPS or IPFS, I'm not sure exactly which one it is, but uh, it's very, it's very frustrating because it's IPFS, so, yes. IPFS. It's very time consuming to, to upload those videos yeah so it, like with yeah. dtube i started this was a big thing around christmas time too i started use, using dtube's easy uploader tool where you're just copying your link from your video and i was assuming mm. that they were taking it and putting it on the blockchain and all that but when i had those videos removed from youtube on or for the crypto youtube purge those same videos were removed from uh dtube and, and off of steam it the post was yeah. there, but you couldn't see the yeah. video it was so yeah i, that's I think it was because they're yeah, I think it was because they're sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I'll no, just I'll just let you go. You, your, uh, you got it, your show. Yeah, sorry. I was just gonna quickly say that um, essentially, I I did an interview with Hyman Danger, the uh, creator of DTube, and when they made that change, they just made it so that people who didn't want to fully utilize the blockchain, but like still wanted to just like get their like YouTube video up on there really really easily, that they could do that, but it was obviously still subject to youtube so i mean it kind of yeah they didn't but they didn't explain that very well and i just yeah. assumed i assumed and i shouldn't have assumed and that goes back into that we should educate ourselves and you know obviously people make mistakes but um yeah you know, now had i done it the other way around and down and just upload it directly it would have been on there and it wouldn't have been removed but it would also have taken me two hours extra too and you know, when you're uploading to multiple different platforms and then you're trying to promote on different platforms, like I'm using um, SoMe Social, Rebuzz, Note Social. I'm trying to be supportive of these communities, but then it makes the process of uploading a video and promoting be like almost like a whole daily activity beyond creating the video <laughs> itself. <laughs> yeah, I totally feel that, man. Like I would say it probably takes me at least an hour if not maybe two hours to go on every single like i probably published to like 20 platforms maybe and it takes hours and half of the time i'm just copy paste upload you know and yeah. um it is a lot of work especially to then also like want to try to interact with that community like 
because it, you don't have all the apps on your phone because a lot of them are decentralized. I don't get notifications. So I've got to open up 20 platforms every day and just like go through and try to answer all the comments. And it's it's hectic. But um, I, I really believe in like being super diversified across like new blockchain tech because – you know, when this stuff blows up, you want to be set up on these platforms and already be established. Um, I, I so I, so I've been going and pretty much posting on everything and then doing like comprehensive reviews to let people know my thoughts on different platforms. You know, I think a lot of platforms are doing really, really well in the crypto space. But one thing that I've noticed that is really struggling is live streaming decentralized applications. Um have you used any like crypto or blockchain live streaming platforms? And what are your thoughts there? So I, I, I was using D D live back in a day when it was first out, um, when it was running on a steam blockchain and all that. And, yeah. but, but again, like, I don't know what the, de- I don't think that would have been decentralized because, you know, where was the video being stored at for people to watch it? So, I mean, it, it's, it's, that's something that people just need to like look into. I don't think that, you can have a decentralized live service. Um, what I what, what I was going to get back at saying, and I think would be really cool though, is if we could find a way to like have a site where we could aggregate, where we could post use one site to post on all these different platforms. So I would love for a crypto blockchain company figure out a way that I would pay could, for that that we could connect up. Yeah, and that's like it would make it so much easier for us to be able to utilize um, the platforms if we could just aggregate it from one central area or at least maybe a couple different like i would it would be so much more effective on my time yeah be- yeah honestly i would pay for a service like that because that would be game changing in the crypto space it's kind of like the restream idea mm. and i think so me social might have something because i know like with rebuzz that you can post on if you have your account set up you can you you can post the other ones so like in float float.app i can post a twitter from float uh, with Rebuzz, I'm going to pull up the application here because this this comes from the makers of Bravo. Um, yeah, Bravo app you probably have covered. Great way for people to be able to earn some cryptocurrency for being, yeah. getting paid for their reviews, like Yelp on steroids, steroids on a blockchain. Yeah, Adam Barlam. So, so yeah, Adam's great dude, and and and, yeah. and the Rebuzz is a slick application. So it's got it set up to where you can post to Facebook, Steam. Twitter and then it has other. So I haven't okay. utilized that service. Um, but I have like posted up to Facebook and Twitter via Rebuzz and I've posted to Twitter via Float. So I like when people are trying to integrate those ideas. And then th- or the other thing is really cool is I, I'm finding amongst a lot of these video platforms like Somi Social and social media platforms and library, they're trying to be collaborative. They're not trying to be competitive, you know, competitive. They're trying to work together yeah. in ways. Um, promoting each other's platforms, not necessarily wanting somebody to be like a, a maximalist on this particular social media platform. They're, you know, like just use them all and just be a part of all of them and just, you know, you know, show some love here, you know, but make sure you're showing some love there too. And, you know, I really like the fact that our space um, doesn't have that. Um, I don't see very much of that kind of like, don't use this platform. Only use library. We are supreme. So, yeah, yeah. For for me, I I don't have any platforms that I say you you should only use this platform. But I do have platforms where I say you probably might want to avoid that, just because of like different 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 issues with different platforms. Like like you mentioned, D Live. Uh, I've done like a deep deep dive into why D Live is like not very viable. Um, because like ever since they switched to the Lionel blockchain and now they're switching to Tron, which is their third or yeah, because what just second Sun acquired it, right? Yeah, and uh, clearly we've seen with Steam that uh, he's doesn't does not have the best intentions for blockchains, and I personally believe he was just buying up PewDiePie's influence on D Live, and if you look at some of their restrictions, which are like insane, if you put in cryptocurrency into d live and you try to get it out you've got to have a minimum amount of like four thousand two hundred and fifty you need to be 16 but you could put any amount in at any age um 
you have to stream 80 hours. So only creators can actually get their money out of this platform. And I can't remember the last one. There were, there was four restrictions, but yeah, I'm just avoiding they make it. it. Yeah. They, they basically just make it so that it's almost impossible to get your money out once it's in, unless you're a streamer and all these other restrictions. Right. So the idea is that, Eventually, there's going to be so much money in there and, and and not to mention that Lino wasn't really a real crypto in, in the fact that you couldn't buy it on an exchange. Um, like it, it was just like basically points on the platform. So yeah. it was very, very sketchy. I don't know if Tron is going to improve it, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. But I've been very skeptical of a lot of live streaming platforms because they're all seemingly going on a very similar model to DLive. And it's concerned me and I've gotten a lot of backlash for criticizing these uh, these live streaming applications. Well, th what I will say in defense uh, of those, you know, there it is not cheap to have a platform that allows people to stream and to give somebody a really good example. Um, and this kind of goes back to the censorship stuff. What's happened with London Real uh, recently? I don't know if you've follow brian rose or are familiar with london real but he's had yeah. interviews on recently with people like david ike alex jones dr rashid buttar all videos that have been um basically removed from mm -hmm. youtube uh, they want the information to be out there so what he did uh brian rose uh through london real his company that does long form interviews with um, just a variety of different people. Very cool guests. Um, sometimes I don't always like every guest, but he gives people a voice and we need more platforms like that. So what he's done is he decided he was going to do live stream on his own, not utilizing any of these platforms that do live streaming. He was going to create his own avenue because he was being so censored. And they had put out like trying like kind of a GoFundMe within like the London real community where people could donate and they were ha had X amount of dollars they were trying to get for the first round. And then they were going to do a second round. Well, they were able to get enough donations that they were able to do two live streams. And I think he's building a platform um, that maybe possibly people like us will be able to utilize. And okay. um, so, but he talked about how much money it costs to be able to stream. Cause he, we're talking about possibly and potentially the largest live stream in the history of mankind at this point, um, allowing for like multiple million people to watch, not on a YouTube platform or a platform that's specifically designed for that. I think he yeah. did the first one this past Sunday with Dr. Rashid Buttar. And I think that the David Icke one, which is um, his third one in this whole series. And David Icke is talking about I'm going to use the term 4H, and I think you know what I'm talking about. And because like YouTube has made it very clear that anything in that category of subject is going to just be removed. And that, that in and of itself, not that I'm prescribing to that belief system or any of that, but the fact that uh, YouTube is allowing for all these other critical thinking conspiracy theories to exist like QAnon and not really d dismissing those videos and removing them, but saying that anything that's 4-H is going to be removed. It just makes me question why. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I will mention quickly, because uh, you brought up Alex Jones, he was banned off DLive. Uh, just so you know, I thought that was interesting to uh, to to mention that because a lot of people are like, OK, well, that's at least still, you know, it's decentralized and it's like it's a fair good block. It's like, well, no, it's uh, it just it's has decentralization just, in a name. It's like the Federal Reserve. There's yeah. nothing federal about it. There's nothing decentralized yeah. about DLive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, it's not super different for the Theta network either. But I got a lot of flack for for talking about the Theta network. Now, so theta I, I won't even. They know what yeah. I will say is I think that they're working on some things. I think they're trying to come around. I think they're trying to be a little bit more user friendly. Uh, virtual blockchain week that's going on this week that Bad Crypto is doing. Um, they actually have worked out something where the live streams are being uh, played on Theta TV. Theta, I think it, in the past, from what I, it looked like it was more like gamers, like mm. sort of like a Twitch. But I think um, I was interested because I know it's like ex YouTube people, ex it's pe it's a lot of people that could do a lot of really cool things. So well, here's the here's the concern, real quick. Um, just so you know, 
and this is why I got a lot of flack, right? I I took a deep dive in this data and and the thing that I thought was the most important for people to be aware of was that anything that you earn on the platform is not withdrawable. I repeat, everything that you earn on the platform you cannot withdraw. So so what is it then? Yeah, like, what's the point what, of the theta token then? So uh, the theta token and T fuel are largely used not with the platform and people most of my criticism was coming from miners ironically um but there was some streamers and they said okay well you can buy like energy drinks and t-shirts through their store i i i guess i guess that's good but i i don't you think that for shipping <laughs> Yeah, probably, but like you can you can spend hours and hours live streaming and then you get one of their t-shirts to rep their brand for them. It's like, okay, is that really why I'm putting in hours and hours for all this time? Like, so I said to streamers and content creators, I said this probably isn't for you. And then a lot of people were really upset because they're like, "Oh, you're like misrepresenting." And it's like, "Well, if you can't withdraw your money, and they're like, oh, okay, but what about all this other stuff? And I say, the only thing that matters at the end of the day is, do I have access and control of my funds? That's it. Like, that's the only thing that that's it comes down to. Thing. Yeah. And and, I, and people don't get that. But I think it's so, so important for, for users, for content creators, for streamers, for everyone, that if you don't have full control over your funds, I don't think they're really your funds. And then that's it. And, it, it's, and if you want to be earning and monetizing and you actually own that stuff, well, that's that's the thing, right? So yeah. I so I didn't recommend them. A lot of people were upset, but uh, I I want to I don't want people to waste their time either because no most people are not doing what me and you are doing, right? Most people are gonna find one, two platforms and they're gonna use that indefinitely. They're not gonna be on 20 platforms spending all the time we're spending to post on all these platforms, right? So I want to find people like the best options so that they will use them because right now they're overwhelmed with how much is out there or they don't even know about anything that's out there. So they don't want to just, okay, yeah, now I'll dedicate the rest of my life to spending, you know, an hour on 20 different platforms every day. It's like, no, they're probably going to use one or two. So I just think it's really important for people to have a good holistic view of what is actually out there and what they can take advantage of. Yeah, I mean, dude, I'm I'm glad that you're doing things like that. And I appreciate you explaining things to me because I definitely have learned a lot in this conversation. You know, so, you know, and that's what I appreciate about these type of videos about these collaborations is, yeah, I get to learn things, you know, you get to learn things, we get to, you know, talk about stuff that's that interests us both and, and hopefully make an impact and maybe, you know, get somebody to start thinking about something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so how much how much time do we have left because i know you're you're kind of uh yeah into... um i got 45 minutes to before i gotta go live and i need to eat something so maybe like another 10 minutes okay cool cool i will uh i will keep track of that okay. um so are there any other platforms that you use like because i mean i'm sure that you do but uh have you taken a look at float in terms of like potentially live streaming or using float for live streaming or, or as like a Patreon alternative? You're, you're talking about float dot app. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I, that is a platform that I'm very active on now. Uh, again, it was just like, there were so many platforms and there wasn't a, a web application or excuse me, a, an, a, an application that we could download on our phone and now they have one. So it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. Um, even on my YouTube channel, I haven't really done a lot of live streaming. That is something that I'm going to start doing more is some live streaming. Um, and I'm going to take advantage of using float. I mean, right now I have a couple supporters on float. There's no benefit really. Like I'm not charging for my content. It's just a way for people to be able to support me. So, you know, I've got a couple people that, you know, have committed to give me X amount of BTC every month. Um, and, you know, so I do have that option that if I wanted to, like, put together uh, some sort of video, if I produced a documentary that I felt like had value that I didn't want to just give away for free, I could, be, I could be utilizing, like, library and float to put them both up as paid content so that you would have to pay a fee 
to be able to watch it. And I don't really think mm -hmm. that's a negative thing, especially if you're putting a lot of time and energy into something like a document, like a you know documentary or something like that. That's that you know you would like to be able to be compensated for your time. And you know people are always ordering movies and things like that. So I don't see any reason why somebody couldn't do that to support their favorite content creators. I mean, that's why, like, I'm going to be utilizing Patreon, on, you know, not because I don't want to utilize Float or not because of these other platforms. It's just more people are comfortable with using Patreon. It's so much easier for someone just to say, okay, because they're already using the platform to just to support me there. So, but what I try to do in my role is while utilizing platforms like YouTube, try to push people to these other platforms. So maybe once I get my Patreon going, I could tell people, you could save a little bit of money, get the same value by using this platform, and I'm actually making more money, and you're spending less money because yeah. that middleman is not taking all that money from both of us. Yeah, yeah, I, so I totally that's agree. That's a powerful thing, but we've got to use those tools of the system against itself. If for someone to just completely say, I'm not going to use YouTube, that's dumb. That's really, really, really dumb. Um, what they should be doing is maybe at the very minimum post a video up and say, hey, I just released an awesome video on library. If you like my content, you should really go over libraries and watch this video because it's not here. Thank you. You know, yeah. use these platforms for these reasons. You know, I mean, there's there's ways of getting around. YouTube is the second biggest search engine aside from Google. So, I mean, there's no reason not to not to utilize this platform. You know, use the weapons yeah. of the system against itself. And, and you know, that's what we 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 can. That's what I've been trying to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, I, I think there's like this weird perception that because we have the time to make videos and do all this stuff every day it seems to people like we have a lot of money to be able to do this do you know what i mean like yeah. people are like oh well like i can't start a podcast that's insane i have a job and da -da -da. it's like i have a job i mean i don't just get to do this for free i'm not making i don't just have all this cash coming in it's like that's why i'm able to do this i'm just like you know it's like people seem to think that it's like well no where we rely on the viewers and we rely on uh yeah and you know the really really good thing that people don't have to donate so to speak to actually support us because we have platforms now like library and all these platforms where it's like if you just subscribe if you watch content of ours on library if you upvote our posts on on hive you are helping us get money and it won't even cost you anything right that is a huge aspect to these platforms that i think is so so important you can support creators without spending any of your money and and i think that's so huge and another good example is like brave browser um, mm -hmm. People can use the Brave browser. They can, uh, you know, have ads on, earn a little bit. And then if they should choose from those free earnings, they could then also donate to creators. And Brave will give people grants, which they can only give to creators and they can't use themselves to incentivize people to participate more. So I think there's a lot of great ways where people can donate. And it won't cost them anything. So I think that is huge. And they can also earn themselves. So yeah. everyone wins. And I think that is why all these decentralized platforms are so attractive and appealing when people actually get over that hurdle of, I don't think that's even possible. Like, I don't believe it. It seems like a scam because it's too good to be true. Uh, once they get over that and they start using it, it's like, oh, okay, now I get it. And on top of all of that, it introduces them to blockchain and crypto where they might not have otherwise done it because they might be like, okay, well, I'm not putting my money into this fake money. But then they start going on library and they start earning LBC and then they sell some and they've got like $10 now of Bitcoin and they're like, oh, this is cool. Like, let me invest some now. I, I get it. I think it's so important. I think social media on blockchain is the path to mass adoption. What, like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, those are really good points, and I definitely agree. Uh, I think the social media on the blockchain and then things like um, when we're when people are utilizing applications without even realizing they're blockchain or cryptocurrency based, you know, I think that's going to be bring a lot of adoption. And then NFTs, I think addition will help a lot with uh, mass yeah. adoption as well. 
But yeah, I mean, it's because people use social media and, you know, sometimes people aren't aware. I mean, with that Cambridge Analytica stuff that happened with Facebook, with the fact that people aren't making any money posting on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or or think, you know, you're not getting paid by those platforms to post. So people are used to the fact that I don't get paid to do this. It's just it's yeah. just how things are. So then when you have platforms that are paying you for it, then you have then you got these people like, well, why? Because all these other guys didn't do it. Like, why are you guys? What's where's, where's the catch? Like, this doesn't seem right. So I think once mm. people started get, getting out of that idea of thinking and they start realizing, like you were saying earlier, that your voice does have actually have a, like your your social media posts do have a value. Like you may not have been aware of that. And a great example of something like that was um, Girl Gone Crypto, Leah. She started out on Steam It, just like posting up like ukulele videos and mm-hmm. just funny videos, nothing to do with cryptocurrency, but was just utilizing her, her social media skills and um, doing her thing. Well, she started making some steam. She started getting involved in cryptocurrency now she is a cryptocurrency content creator and has a youtube channel and is on a lot of these platforms that we're talking about so you never know like where that path is going to take you so i just really encourage people as much as possible to stay open-minded about a lot of the things that we talk about on a regular basis but the things that we spoke about in this particular episode i mean we covered a lot of really a lot of thought-provoking things you know when it really when, when you kind of condense and look back on what we were just talking about um it's a lot for people to take in but yeah i think that, i think that we made a lot of sense and i think that you know i'm hoping that somebody finds value in what we're talking about and you know if if there's any questions that people have about anything we're speaking about you know i i'll check out the comment section on your youtube channel so you know i definitely encourage people to ask questions you know and then we can try to point people in better directions i think that absolutely the the potential power of blockchain is is going to be immensely awesome, but it's going to, it's, you got to look at it as the same way that you look at something like a gun. Uh, it could be used for good or bad. So that's why I've been trying to push that idea of empowering people, because if we can stand up for things that we believe in, we can, we can shape the future to be a better future for us and our, and our children and our grandchildren and future generations to come. And it's our responsibility with what's going on right now. Everybody has all this time to reflect. Everybody has all this time in your mind. These people who are on social media saying that they can't stand sitting at home, they can't stand what they really can't stand. And they're not saying it is they can't stand being alone with themselves. I, yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. They know some people yeah. are really scared to have to be alone with themselves and realize, you know, and go through. But this this period, a lot of people are calling a great awakening. And I, I would say that mm. you know, we can use this this event that's taking place right now. When everybody talks about things not being the same as they were before and there being a new normal, we can define that. And, you know, we have that opportunity to shape the future that we want. And I'm really been trying to push that more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's something that I've been seeing a lot lately is people kind of, I don't know exactly what what term to use, but they're like discrediting or like moving away from like celebrity news and celebrity like people don't care now that things actually matter. Right. And when celebrities do try to do like stupid, pointless stuff, people call them out now. And it's like it's becoming much more obvious to people that it's not that big of a deal. Like if you're going to spend your time spend it learning or you know looking at new technologies or or something that is more beneficial to you and we're realizing that like all the celebrity stuff that was going on i mean i mean a lot of us are already aware of it but other people are now becoming more aware that a lot of it is all just like this like faux personality to just giving them what they wanted to see but people like us are trying to give people what uh, well, showing them what is actually there rather than giving them what they want. You may not like want to know that YouTube is censoring a lot of content, but it is. So we'll we'll point that out. And I think um, and I think it's really important that that shift is kind of happening right now because people have all this time to do research, to really look into what's going on. And um, and, and I and another big thing uh, that I want to sort of just like slightly switch into is and what you just mentioned is like people might not be super blockchain savvy or crypto savvy but there's a lot of people starting on these platforms now that are sort of building out the niche um because one of the biggest things that i've seen people say is 
yeah, but there's not much gardening on library. So I don't want to be like, I don't want to put in all the work to like start the first gardening channel, but actually you could start the first gardening channel and then it gets really popular. And now you're the only gardening channel on library. So if anyone is interested in gardening, you will be the go-to. And I think that's the way that people should look at it versus um, like, oh, I'm like, there's not enough. So no one's going to search it. It's like, well, you don't know that until you try. And I think building out niches earlier is what's going to help people become massive successes on these platforms. So I think it's important to consider starting a niche rather than being concerned whether or not there's already a big community there. No, that's great points, dude. I definitely, I definitely agree with you hundred percent. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I need you. I know you need to get ready for everything. I think this has been really good and I'm sure yeah, there's a lot do, that people can take away from. We should do this again. You know I mean? I like, I like yeah. to do, I like these type of conversations with people. So I mean, we'll definitely schedule something. May is going to be like, I've had a lot of like me and you had to do a lot of rescheduling. I've had a lot of stuff going on the past couple of weeks between being sick, between like all my interviews. I've been working way too much. I've been putting out more content than I can keep up with right now. So it's just been I'm I'm purposefully slowing down as far as like what I'm scheduling in May um, so that I can produce more content. That's just me as yeah. well, because I don't want to be known for just interviewing people. Um, I do like the idea of just having like just these fireside chats and just talking about a variety of subjects. So I definitely look forward to doing this again, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do something on your channel in the future. And maybe we can do like a, a follow up to a bunch of the changes and how things have sort of played out uh, post Bitcoin having. So that that'll be, be interesting. Awesome, we didn't even get into that, but I mean, there's only so much we can cover. Um but yeah, yeah no, thank I mean, you we so could much for it. Yeah, dude, I really enjoyed it. And we can, I mean, I could go on for hours if, if I didn't have a committed live stream that I was going to be doing, you know, and have no problem continuing to talk. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, no, this has been really great. I think there's a lot of uh, insights and a lot of things that people can take away and uh, actively start using and doing themselves. So thank you so much again, everyone. Make sure to check out Rice Crypto on YouTube, Library, and all the platforms we mentioned. Um, but yeah, again, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, dude, I really appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around. Since you did, please give this video a like. And if you'd like to see more, make sure to subscribe. You can also support me by donating to the addresses below. If you're using an Ethereum wallet, you can send to scottcbusiness.eth. If you're using another wallet like Coinami, Trust Wallet, Atomic Wallet, um, you can send to scottcbusiness.crypto. On both wallets, I accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ripple. If not, a like, a subscribe makes a huge difference as well, and I really appreciate you sticking around this long. And you can find me everywhere under at Scott C Business. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scott C Business, signing off. Cheers.